Well, good evening and a very warm, it is a very warm welcome, isn't it, this evening um, to St. Paul's, whether you're joining us in person here in the church or whether you're joining us via the live stream. It's so great that you've joined us. My name is Lindsay. I'm one of the pastors here and a very warm welcome from me. Yeah, good evening. My name is Tim. A welcome from me as well. Hope you had a good afternoon. Some of you enjoyed the football, maybe? So far, so good, wasn't it, for England? So put me in a good mood. We've um, got lots coming up. We've got, um, we're looking again at our theme around friendship and what it means to kind of cultivate great friendships. And tonight, Ben's going to be looking at Passage and Roof and speaking about kind of how we can be committed in friendship. And as a segue to that, I'll be doing a little chat with Simeon a bit later, just talking about his experience and maybe a bit of my experience about what it is to have good friendships. Brilliant. But first, we're going to worship. So why don't we stand? And let's begin to prepare our hearts. Father, we thank you for this day. And we thank you now that we can come into this place, into this building, and that we can worship you. Thank you, Lord, that we can do that freely. We know that there are many who can't, but we're so grateful that we can worship you freely. And so we just welcome you, Lord, into this place. And we say, Lord, may our worship be pleasing to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's worship together. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship him.
worship his holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I'll worship your holy for us, how he's always enough for us, and the name for this in the Bible is Jireh.
Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness. Your faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You never failed me yet. Yeah, Lord, we thank you that we can proclaim you as the King of Kings. I thank you just for how vast and how wide is your love for your people. How great is your faithfulness. And um, before the service, just had a picture of almost like Jacob's picture of the dream with kind of the stairway to heaven. And just a sense that maybe some of us, it's a good day for some of us, it's a heavy day, it's a weary day. Whatever the day, the Lord is good. And he's a God who has come from heaven to earth to draw near to his people. He's a God who's chosen to get dirty. He's chosen to walk with us. So Lord, we give you all that we are, wherever we are, however we feel. This is who we are right now. And I just pray, come Holy Spirit, meet us where we're at. Remind us of your goodness. Remind us of your faithfulness. Fill us afresh of your love and your peace. Thank you that your love is enough. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Do be seated. I'm going to invite uh, Simeon up to the front and while he comes up. If you are new this evening, in person or online, we'd love to extend a warm welcome to you. If you're in person, do come and say hello to myself, Ben, Lindsay, or one of the team. And do make sure that before you leave, you grab a welcome pack. We'd love to welcome you properly. But we're talking about friendship tonight. We're talking about what it means to kind of cultivate uh, good friendships. And obviously, this particular time or season that we've been in has been harder than most. We've been in a pandemic, which has probably put an unusual strain on friendships. And I've invited Simeon up to the front just to have a kind of open discussion with myself. We are by no means experts. I'm probably, yeah, you're, you're great. You're a really social guy. I don't know what I am. But, but we're gonna, just going to share a little bit. But really what we need to do is to be thinking about yourself and where you're at and how you might relate to these questions. Does that make sense? So, Simeon, are you the kind of guy who likes to have a few close friends or are you the kind of guy who likes to have a bigger group of friends? Um, yeah, probably a few close friends, I think. Um, back home in Kent, I have quite a, a big group of close friends. Um, but I think probably <laughs> it's probably like a small group of close friends and then it kind of extends a little bit. So, yeah, small group. Small group of close friends. Small group. Which it's hard to know, isn't it? I hope you guys I'm know what you are. I'm on the spot here. I'm not, I have not prepared any of these questions. Okay, well, I'm the opposite. I'm someone who likes to have probably a broader kind of cluster of friends in different groups. So pandemic's, pandemic has hit. What yeah. kind of impact has that had on these close kind of friends of yours? So many online quizzes. That's what it is. Um, yeah, no, it was okay, actually. Um, we... Uh, so, so yes, yeah, so I went, I was at the time when it was happening, I was living in Battersea and I was living with two of my close friends um, and we uh, ended up all going back to Kent. Everyone was in and around the area, but obviously we didn't see anyone. Um, so we all had like a group chat and it was all online quizzes, themed online quizzes, a lot of, yeah. That okay. was pretty much, that was pretty much. Is it. online quizzes good for, good for friendships? Has that helped you guys? Or have you found other ways maybe to kind of stay close? Um, I'd love to say that like I kind of checked in on people, um, but I probably didn't. I think it was online quizzes a lot, really. Um, I did text, no, you kind of text a few people, um, but I had my family around me as well, who I, I get on with as friends, I guess. Um, not to sound really corny, but yeah, no, that, so we're quite close. So um, I had that friendship already there. So I think um, the extended kind of, oh my goodness, there's a life outside of the four walls um, was really good. So the online quizzes kind of provided that, but there wasn't really room for much else. So um, that was pretty much the extent yeah. of it, for me at least. 
What about you? Well, I've probably played less quizzes than you. I can't say I've played loads of, <laughs> loads of quizzes. But I, I mean, my, my risk is a kind of a, I guess, more of an introvert, is that I could withdraw and maybe not invest sufficiently in kind of keeping those friendships going. And I think definitely the last couple of months I've been reflecting, actually, there's a real kind of effort needed, actually, to, to stay in touch, to be mindful of people. And I guess I probably use WhatsApp to do that. But even now I'm thinking who and how, probably how is the challenge and how can I kind of meet up and extend and reconnect with some people? Yeah, no, that's really interesting because I'm not someone, I'm, I can easily like go ages without talking to someone and feel like it's totally okay. And then you just kind of sit down, you catch up where we're all wet left off. But um, you know, you have so, so, certain people with certain characteristics, they, they're the ones who who organise things, but I realised that we, we, with the online quizzes as an example, uh, whoever won had to then organise it, which put the emphasis on people who wouldn't usually organise things, so actually I learned that the importance of um, everyone kind of putting that effort into friendships, um, and really needing to be imaginative and creative and kind of think outside the box, um, or sometimes when it, com when it comes to like, okay, what can we actually do to um, connect and meet up with people, so, so yeah, no, I've, I've learned that as well, yeah. Brilliant. And you've obviously got some very close friendships. What would you say is like, what's a key or just a simple lesson for us? What would you recommend as to how you kind of keep hold of those close friendships? What wisdom have you got? <laughs> um, I think um, sharing, sharing interests, I think, is really important. Um, and when people have ideas that you might not think are a good idea, just run with it. Um, and just goes like, oh, okay, we're going go-karting, go awesome, right, okay. Even if that's not your thing, um, and then you could then suggest something else that kind of gives you like, okay, they're investing in me, therefore I will invest in them kind of thing. Um, I think, yeah, just up for anything, I think, is really, really quite key. Um, yeah, I think, and just patience as well, because when they inevitably annoy you, um, even if you've been friends for ages and you're living in a flat with them, um, they will annoy you. And it's just feeling like, just, just yeah, being patient. And knowing that they're kind of good people at the end of the day, so you should really be patient with them. Um, but yeah, because then they'll be patient for you. You know, you reap what you sow. Brilliant, thank you so much. I was reflecting this morning, Mark was talking about just kind of, we're in a season of kind of restoring and restoration. And, and what that means to my friendships. And I think for me, it's actually, how do I go the extra mile? I learned that probably the hard way. And actually, the extra mile often means you know, making the effort to be face-to-face, -face, which feels very just different at the moment. And for me, that's how do I pop in? How do I check in in a more personal way than the text and the WhatsApp? That's definitely my challenge. So, yeah. But thank you, Simeon. I'm going to invite no Lindsay up now. We're going to kind of just tell you about what's going on in the life of St. Paul's. We have a few opportunities, don't we, to, to serve. Do you want to tell us about those, Lindsay? We do. So, um, the first thing to say is that with the children's groups opening up, um, <clears throat> gradually, gradually, in fact, today the little shiners, the, the um, nursery shiners were able to join in um, children's groups today. So that was really lovely. And gradually, gradually, they're opening up. But inevitably, we need more people who can help with volunteering to, to help to do those groups, to run those groups. So if you um, think that you might be able to offer maybe just an hour uh, twice a month, so perhaps one service twice a month, Tamlin, our kids pastor, would love to hear from you. Um, she has done an amazing job at regathering all the teams, but for various reasons, some people have had to step back. Um, and so there are some gaps to fill, and she would love to hear from you, wouldn't you, Tamlin? So that's that. That's one opportunity. And then the other thing is that, um, as lots of us know, our, our, our youth pastor, Izzy Cole, recently left us. And so that's left a gap here. Uh, we are advertising at the moment, and we have had a lot of interest. We've had some applications, which is great. But if you know of anyone who you think would um, be suitable for that role, and you, you, know, you can let them know if you think they'd be suitable, um, then please pass on the information, and um, we would love to 
have an application from them. I think it's I think applications are due by the 21st of June. I think um, so. Really important, a very important role for someone in this church to look after our young people. And then the other thing is that Tamlin, again, our, um, our kids pastor, is going to be going on maternity leave in September, and so that means there's going to be an opportunity for someone to fill her role for a year until she comes back. It's a full-time role um, overseeing the kids' work here at the church. So again, if you know of anybody who you think would be suitable for that role or someone who's interested in taking that role, do please let them know and invite them to get in, in touch um, because we would love to progress that if possible. Tim. Brilliant. And I want to tell you about some life groups. That's just an amazing way to kind of connect with one another. And I know you hear us talk about it a lot. We, we kind of bang the drum for the life groups because they are so good. Because actually, but like Simeon's described, they are, if you like, the perfect way to really journey together with a small group of people, kind of just what you, what's going on for you in life, that kind of prayer support during the week, and hopefully being able to meet up on a regular basis in person, perhaps. I know my life group, we're looking at how we can kind of do both in person and continue a kind of a hybrid format because we've learned to be more flexible. And there's loads of great resources out there. Some of the life groups are doing the unanswered prayer course, which is brilliant. We're starting that this week, and I know, Ben, you've done it. So do, if you'd like to check out Life Group, come and speak to one of us or look at the website, and you can pick the group that you'd like to kind of test or explore with. And I think if you want to know more, you can email lifegroups at stpaulzeeling.com, and you will get a, a reply from Monica Backus, who kind of oversees it, along with Guy and Kari Lerero. Why are you smiling? Did you say that already? No, because you, you just are so much better at okay, you know, this kind of thing. <laughs> Are we done? I think yes. we're done with our notes. I think Katie's going to come up, isn't she? And you're going to read, and then Ben is going to come up and speak. Brilliant. Uh, the reading's from Ruth chapter 1, it's verses 1 to 18. In the days when the judges ruled Israel, a severe famine came upon the land. So a man from Bethlehem in Judah left his home and went to live in the country of Moab, taking his wife and two sons with him. The man's name was Elimelech and his wife was Naomi. Their two sons were Marlon and Kilian. They were Ephrathites from Bethlehem in the land of Judah. And when they reached Moab, they settled there. Then Elimelech died and Naomi was left with her two sons. The two sons married Moabite women. One married a woman named Orpah and the other a woman named Ruth. But about 10 years later, both Marlon and Kilian died. This left Naomi alone without her two sons or her husband. Then Naomi heard in Moab that the Lord had blessed his people in Judah by giving them good crops again. So Naomi and her daughters-in-law got ready to leave Moab to return to her homeland. With her two daughters-in-law, she set out from the place where she had been living, and they took the road that would lead them back to Judah. But on the way, Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, Go back to your mother's homes, and may the Lord reward you for your kindness to your husbands and to me. May the Lord bless you with the security of another marriage. Then she kissed them goodbye, and they all broke down and wept. No, they said, we want to go with you to your people. But Naomi replied, why should you go on with me? Can I still give birth to other sons who could grow up to be your husbands? No, my daughters, return to your parents' homes, for I am too old to marry again. And even if it were possible, and if I were to get married tonight and bear sons, then what? Would you wait for them to grow up and refuse to marry someone else? No, of course not, my daughters. Things are far more bitter for me than for you, because the Lord himself has raised his fist against me. And again they wept together, and Orpah kissed her mother-in-law goodbye. But Ruth clung tightly to Naomi. Look, Naomi said to her, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. You should do the same. But Ruth replied, don't ask me to leave you and turn back. Wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you live, I will live. Your people will be my people, and your God will be my God. Wherever you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. May the Lord punish me severely if I allow anything but death to separate us. When Naomi saw that Ruth was determined to go with her, she said nothing more. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Katie, for reading. It's great to be with you this evening if you've not met before. Uh, my name's Ben. I'm part of the team here. And I hope you had a great afternoon. Who did watch the football, just out of interest? Great. 1-0, wasn't it? 
is football coming home? Who knows? But it's good fun. It's good fun. Um, shall we pray? And then, uh, and then we're going to think a little bit about friendship tonight. So, Father, thank you so much for your goodness to us in so many ways. Thank you for your presence here. Thank you for the beautiful weather today. Thank you for the joy of sport, if that's our thing. And, Lord, we just pray for uh, this evening. Pray that we'd have ears to hear your voice and this theme of friendship that we might know your blessings in our life. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I want to begin by asking, uh, who saw the, the Friends reunion uh, recently? Did anyone see that? I, I'm not even going to look at Lucy, because I know she would have seen it already. The, the biggest Friends fan in London, probably. But a few people have seen it. And uh, it premiered a couple of weeks ago on Sky One. There was a lot of anticipation about it. 17 years since the final episode, can you believe it, Uh, where Rachel got off the plane and we assume that Ross and Rachel did eventually get together. 17 years since that final episode. And uh, the the, uh, reunion has received mixed reviews, it's probably fair to say. For some, it was great to see the the famous six back together, uh, sharing anecdotes and stories. For others, uh, people have said there was a sense of awkwardness perhaps with it and overproduction. But here's the thing that strikes me with Friends. Why is it so popular? Why is, why is Friends so popular? Uh, in 2018, uh, Friends was the most streamed TV program on Netflix. That's 14 years after it had finished. And uh, I wonder how many times you have seen the same episode of Friends. Probably more times than we would care to admit. But I think Friends is popular because it does what it says on the tin. It invites us as much as a a TV show can into the joy of friendship. David Swimmer, one of the actors, comments, the show is a fantasy for a lot of people, having a group of friends who become like family. And the point is this, all of us want the joy of friendship in our lives. All of us want deep friendship and and we know really that that what makes life rich is not so much the the number in our bank account, if you like, but the quality of our relationships. There's something about our humanity and how we're made for relationship. Proverbs 27 says, a sweet friendship refreshes the soul. And maybe this year of all years, as we've been disconnected in some way from our friends, that it's made us really see the value of them. And that's kind of why as a a service we're wanting to press into this in the season, as we try and reconnect with our friendships perhaps. And so natural question to ask, how do we build great friendships in life? If friendships bring joy, how do we build great friendships? Well, the temptation is to kind of think about how other people are friends to us when we think about friendships, what people have or haven't done for us. But actually, the way to build great friendships is to think about, oh, how can I be a friend to others? And that's the kind of tact that that we're going to take in this series. We're beginning by looking at Ruth and Naomi and their beautiful friendship that we see in the Old Testament. And if you've got a a Bible, then can I encourage you to to have that open in Ruth chapter 1. It'll just help you to to follow along. I'll just recap the story so it's fresh in our minds. We start with a a lady called Naomi. And uh, Naomi is a Jew. She's living at the time of the judges, which is not a particularly easy time for God's people. And uh, there's a famine in the land. So we're told that Naomi and her her family, her husband and her two sons and their wives travel to somewhere called Moab and they settle down. And then after some time, sadly, Naomi experiences a number of bereavements in her life. Her husband passes away, and then her two sons die as well. And so there's just this kind of unit of Naomi and her daughters-in-law. At this point, Naomi is broken. She is deeply sad at the death of the men in her life, of course. But also, there's that probably anxiety for Naomi about what that means for her insecurity in that time in, in history. And so she decides, the famine in Judah is over, she decides to go back to Judah 
and she encourages her two daughters to go to their family homes to find new husbands to start new lives. And one daughter-in-law, Orpa, eventually decides to go back to her own family. But Ruth, we're told in verse 14, clung tightly to Naomi. She refuses to leave. And then she says these incredible words to Naomi. In verse 16, we read this. Don't ask me to leave you and turn back. Wherever you go, I will go. And wherever you live, I will live. Your people will be my people. Your God will be my God. Wherever you die, I will die. And there I'll be buried. May the Lord punish me severely if I allow anything but death to separate us. And so we have this picture throughout this this short book of this beautiful commitment between Ruth and Naomi, this beautiful friendship that they shared. And there's just a couple of things that I want to draw out of this friendship for us tonight. And the first thing I want to draw out is that friendship is about traveling in the same direction together. It's about sharing the same goals in life as someone else or a particular passion. Or it's about having the same vision for life that someone else has and pursuing that vision together. Ruth says to Naomi, your God will be my God. I think they had the same vision for life. And if we just imagine the story for a moment, the picture that we get is they they literally went on a journey together from Moab back to Bethlehem, Judah. And they're kind of walking side by side on that, on that long journey together. I think it's a, a picture for us of the posture of friendship. C.S. Lewis talks about this in his writings on friendship in his book, The Four Loves. And he says, look, the, the posture of romantic love is two people looking into each other's eyes and marveling at how beautiful they are and how wonderful they are and how funny they are. You might imagine people on a date, for example, staring at each other. That's the posture of romantic love. But the posture of friendship is rather two people side by side, shoulder to shoulder, traveling in the same direction together. And we see this when two people perhaps do the same thing for work. Uh, My wife uh, is a doctor and occasionally we'll go to a wedding and we'll sat on the same table as another doctor. And if that happens, I know like it's kind of hopeless for me to get involved in the conversation because they they share the same doctor language. It's like they speak a whole other language uh, and they can share stories and anecdotes because they know each other's worlds. And maybe for us, you know, our workplace is a natural place that we will make friends. Perhaps because we uh, are passionate about our work, we can share the same experiences. So that's a natural place to to make friends. But we also see that uh, in the passions that we have, in our hobbies, a little bit like Simeon was talking about this evening. And I think of our uh, associate vicar uh, here at St. Paul's, Chris. Uh, Chris is, uh, he's just looking, looked up now, but Chris is a big fan of fishing. And sometimes Chris will come in on a Monday morning. He's been fishing over the weekend, and uh, he's caught a massive fish. You can tell he's really excited. And he wants to tell us all about it and the type of fish and how big it was. And the problem is that most of us actually don't know a lot about fishing, so it's kind of hard to share in the excitement. But as soon as he finds someone who shares his love of fishing, he's off. He could talk for hours about whatever people talk about fishing do, like rods, nets, I don't know. I'm not a big fan of fishing, as you can, you can tell. But maybe we have friendships like that. Perhaps there's a friend that you meet, meet up with, and you can talk about the books that you're reading. Perhaps there's someone who doesn't quite get the humor or perspective. Uh, perhaps someone, sorry, perhaps there's someone who shares your humor or perspective like no one else, and meeting them for a, a coffee can be a real joy for you. So, so we can make time for, for friendships where we're moving in the same direction, perhaps over work or uh, over a passion, but there's also spiritual friendships that we can enjoy. C.S. Lewis puts it like this, friendships arise when two or more companions discover that they have in common some insight or interest that others do not share 
the typical expression of opening friendship would be something like, what? You too, I thought I was the only one. And when it comes to our spiritual friendships, where we can journey together with others in following Jesus and encouraging each other to, to, to live for him and to reflect him in our lives, for my experiences is, is that's often the, some of the deepest friendships that we can enjoy. And I think this is the kind of friendship that Ruth and Naomi shared. As we look through this book, we see Ruth and Naomi encouraging each other in their walk with God. Naomi uh, encourages Ruth uh, as he, she goes on to marry Boaz. And what I've discovered is that actually asking great questions is a key to going deep in our spiritual friendships. It, it can be easy, can't it, actually, to keep on a, a superficial level if we're not careful. And there are contexts for that where we talk about perhaps more general things. Perhaps here in church, at the back of church, we'll talk about more general things. But I think we need context in which we can go deeper in our walk with the Lord and in, in asking questions of our friends. Perhaps that's a prayer triplet. Perhaps that's a, a one-to-one -one friend that we have. One of my uh, richest friendships is someone I met a number of years ago at college. We meet up once a month for a pub lunch and we ask each other questions to encourage each other. Three questions that might be great to get us going in this area. How is your walk with God? What are you celebrating in your life at the moment? What are you finding challenging? Simple questions, but they help us to be intentional and go deeper in those spiritual, that spiritual friendship that we can enjoy. So that's the, the first thing I see in this story. It's about walking in the same direction together. And then secondly, the, the thing I notice is that great friendship is about consistency. See, through the ups and downs of Naomi's life, Ruth was there. In verse 20, just after the passage that we had read, uh, we see this. Naomi says this, Don't call me Naomi. Call me Mara, for the Lord has made life bitter for me. She's in this place of great suffering, of sadness, of loss, and Ruth is there. She's present with her in that, that place of sadness. And then the, the story turns completely at the end when Ruth marries Boaz. They have a child. There's a sense of redemption in Naomi's life. Her friends say to her, praise the Lord who has provided a redeemer in your family. There's a, then a sense of rejoicing together through the ups and downs of life. They were there for each other. And one of the joys of friendship is when you have traveled with someone through life for a long period of time. I think it's a bit like you go on a walk with someone and perhaps if you get up a hill, you can turn back and you see where you've gone and you can, you can get the kind of, a, a, I guess, a picture of just how far you have come. I think of where I am in my life now and I look back at friends that I perhaps made at university, and, and the things that we've been together, even in that time, trying to uh, work through finding jobs and careers, things that have gone well, things that haven't gone well, finding relationships, perhaps more recently, friends that have had kids or are struggling to have kids and walking through friends with that. It's amazing to be able to look back and see how far we've journeyed together to have a constant presence in each other's lives. So consistency is a wonderful gift that we could give in our friendship. Not just on the days when it's, the sun is shining and it's, we can go out for a nice lunch, but in those seasons of life which are hard and difficult. I think that's where true friendship is made. Proverbs 17 says, A friend loves at all times and a brother is born for a time of adversity. So what might that look like? Vaughan Roberts, uh, in his excellent book on friendship, it's called True Friendship. It's a really small book. If you want to go a little bit deeper into this, I really recommend it. But he talks about the importance of small acts, small acts of kindness to, to build and develop friendships. He says this, the best friendships have often been expressed and strengthened through relatively insignificant actions, such as listening to dreams and concerns, or writing a note before an exam, or giving a lift to hospital, 
or looking after children in the afternoon. It's often like this, that countless small acts and actions, which are then reciprocated in other ways, close friendship develops over time and grows in both affection and allegiance. And so I want to ask, well, what, what might we be able to do this week? Which of our friends could we bless in some way? Is there someone we could remember to text, to say, I'm praying for you. I know you're going through a difficult time at work at the moment. And I just want you to know I'm with you. I'm here for you. Is there someone we could send perhaps a, a card to or, or a little gift to just, just to bless them? The, uh, the other day we had a, a little chocolate brownie come through our door and I was wondering who that was from. It was a friend of Lydia's who uh, had just sent her a chocolate brownie because she's just gone on maternity leave. I think often women are much better at doing that than men. But, but what could we do in a small way to help serve our friends? Who could we make time for? Time is a wonderful gift that we can give. To be able to really listen to someone, hear their dreams for the future, hear their concerns in the now. Friendship is one of the great joys of life. And this, this evening is just a bit of an introduction, really, to that theme. And we get that picture. It's about finding people that we can walk with, we have something in common with, whom we can share a, a passion, a dream, a vision for life and being intentional about being around those kind of people, and particularly in our, our Christian walk, asking good questions, encouraging one another. And then friendship is about being consistent, a consistent presence in people's lives. And as I come in to land, I'll, I'll finish with this. It's, it's often said, actually, in the story of Ruth, that Boaz is a, a picture of Jesus. He's known as this kinsman redeemer. He redeems their family. He gives them security. He's kind of, a, in a sense, a, a way of God's provision. But I also think that Ruth is a great picture of Jesus, of the friendship of Jesus in our lives, who is ultimately faithful, who loves us through it all, who loves us through the ups and the downs. And you know, as we walk with Jesus and we know his friendship in our lives, we will learn what it means to be a great friend to others and our lives will be richer for it. So why don't we stand and let's pray together. And Lindsay is going to join me. Let's just be still for a moment. And Holy Spirit, we welcome your presence here. We welcome your presence. The Spirit of Jesus, that faithful friend. And this topic might bring up all sorts of different things for us and we just wait for a moment just open our hearts to you come Holy Spirit And um, I wonder whether, just as you were listening to Ben, um, there may have been something slightly different going on for you. There was a word as we prayed about the service to start with this evening, and um, I sense that for some here, maybe one or two, this subject is a very raw one. And uh, maybe as you've been listening to Ben, you've been thinking, I would love to be that good friend but actually I don't feel like I have someone to be that friend to. 
I long for a good friend. I long to be a good friend and to share those things and to, to do those things that Ben has talked about. Sharing goals, sharing vision, sharing interests. invite you just in this moment just to hand back to God you know he knows he knows the secrets of our hearts he knows the pain that we go through he knows our feelings and so just in this moment now tell him what you feel tell him your heart's longing, tell him your pain. And ask him. Ask him for what you want. You know, God, just like Boaz, is a, is a great provider. Ben made reference to Boaz at, at the end. You know, he's a, God is a great provider and he longs to answer our prayers. Maybe as you pray, he'll just begin to show you somebody who you might be able to kind of initiate friendship with, draw near to. Maybe invite to go for a coffee now that we can do that. Maybe you've already had someone in your mind who you'd like to be friends with and you've needed the courage to just to make that first step. He's the great provider. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And just as we're waiting on the Spirit, I just had a sense there might be someone watching uh, online or, or here in person who's, um, your living arrangement's really difficult uh, at the moment. Um, maybe in a house share or flat or something like that and um, the Lord will just want to say to you that he sees you and, and uh, he will make a way for you uh, maybe that's a, a word that really speaks to, to you but we're going to continue to to have that posture of being open to the spirit as the, the band lead us now in our, our final song together
for your faithfulness and thank you that you're always walking with us that you're always walking with us in this whole area of friendships whether it be helping us to be those good friends or whether it be helping us to find that friend that we maybe haven't had for a while thank you Lord for your faithfulness to us we love you Lord thank you Amen Amen. Well, we're almost at the end of our service. In a moment, Tim's going to pray. But just to say, um, if you are new or visiting us this evening, please, please don't leave without connecting with somebody at the welcome desk, one of the welcome team. We'd love to give you a pat to tell you a little bit more about the church and how you can get more involved if you would like to. Uh, and the other thing is to say that we invite you to leave um, as promptly as you can, but we would love to gather on the lawn outside uh, to my right and your left, right at the front, um, so that we can catch up and chat to our heart's content out there. Tim, why don't you pray? Lord Jesus, we thank you so much for tonight. We thank you that we just have this opportunity to have gathered in your presence. And Lord, as we go from here, when we know the blessing of the God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, may he be with us now and always. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thanks so much for being here this evening. We look forward to seeing you very soon.